Yep. So, too hot for magic. Oh! Almost went into the brambles again. Uh... <laughs> I have a good topic of conversation. I have a good. I have something I need to talk about with all you guys. So, hopefully, I'm not the only one who thinks this because I'm just going to sound like an asshole. So, Nintendo at E3 unveiled. Uh, or actually, no, Nintendo hasn't come out on E3 yet. Just kidding. But it was just leaked in the news that Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo. Oh, I can get that later, can't I? Nintendo, for the Wii U, is going to be releasing the quote-unquote Pro Controller. And I tweeted about this, and I put a Facebook post up. <sighs> and, you know, it looks like the Xbox remote. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I think it's a fantastic idea. But my question is, why didn't this happen when the Wii first came out? And why isn't it the primary controller. Don't you think that, you know, motion capabilities like the Kinect and the Wii, as fun as they are, they should be a completely optional. Like, it shouldn't be the entire experience of whatever video game you're playing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that it shouldn't be completely reliant on the fact that motion controls are controlling it. And that's my problem with the Wii U, is it's like, they give you this you know, it, it looks like this complete shit controller. It looks like a, a dinner plate that I'm supposed to put in the microwave and then have my TV dinner on that. That's what it looks like. Uh, and, uh, like, why isn't that the controller that comes with the Wii and the Wii U and have motion uh, stuff be secondary? Alright, so we got, like, a little mini boss battle here. Um, and as you know, with boss battles, we learned from Rusty Bucket Bay... Gold feathers are your best friend. So we're just gonna slap on our gold feathers real quickly here and take this out as fast as we possibly can. And that's all you have to do. They're, they're getting bored of guarding it though. So yeah, that's my rant for the day about the Wii U and the Wii controllers. Also, because the Wii looks like a derp when she's climbing those stairs. Uh, is there anything on the little tippy tip tip? Nope. Nothing on the tippy tip tip. Tip top turtle 20. Now! No! Oh, you see that save? You see that save? Motherfucker tried to kill me. Motherfuckers want to try to find me. Alright. Now we get to go back up. <laughs> Okay, back all the all the way down to the bottom, and now we get to go back up. I uh, recently started uh, really getting heavily invested into Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, and I put a few videos of that up on my channel. I don't really, I don't know if I plan on you know continuing any any form of playthrough with it because it's uh it's a bit of a questy game, you know, and it's uh it's really uh, you know, it's very side questy, and whenever I watch people who do those kind of games, you know, I get kind of annoyed, so I sort of refrain from doing it myself, the only exception being the four episodes I posted of Kingdoms of Amalur, and then a little bit of that Oblivion series I did a while back, and that's... God damn it! I can't believe I just fell for that. Down to the bottom again. Anyway, yeah, so... No, I've been playing Kingdoms of Amalur, and, you know, if you haven't picked that game up by now, it's probably, I don't know, maybe around 50 bucks retail, probably 40, 30 used. It's a fantastic game. And like I said in those videos before, you know, kind of critiquing the game and stuff, it's, uh, it is composed, all the music is composed by Grant Kirkhope, same guy who composed all the music in this game. So if you do enjoy the music in this game, take a look at it, because it's really, really good. Uh, I, as far as like a rating on Kingdoms of Amalur would go, I would, uh, I'd probably give it like a... Oh, that's difficult to say. Let's see. From today's standards, 
not to sound like a dick, but from today's standards, I give it a uh, 7 out of 10, which seems kind of low, but it's really not, because what I what I mean by today's standards is uh, when you play that game, it does feel dated. Like, it feels like an older Xbox game. And I'm sure all of you Xbox gamers know what I'm saying when I say it feels like an older Xbox game. But the thing of it, the thing of the game is, you know, it came out, uh, I think, yeah, winter of last year. So that's not that long ago, and it certainly it it looks a bit more like aged than it should. Like it's running on an old engine. Some of the cutscenes have skips, you know. And, like, the loading times aren't really the best for such a, you know... It's not a super, super high-res game, but the loading times sort of, you know, they act like it is, even though it's not, so... Probably a 7 out of 10 overall, and all 7 of those points go into the storyline and the actual game mechanics, because they are absolutely fantastic and spot-on. The, the combat is really good. You can hop right into it. It's fast. It's easy, and uh, you feel you feel really powerful when you're doing it. And that's that's a sign of a good combat system to me. It's like I don't feel limited uh, in any sort any any way. It's like even though there's a specific move set, and I wish there were more moves in the game, you know, I. I, I don't. F I still don't feel limited by the number of moves I can do. I, I still feel really powerful, and like I can just whoop ass whenever I want to. All right, so Eerie only ate. I think five of the eight uh, caterpillars. That's what they're called. Yeah, five of the eight caterpillars that I had. So we actually still hang on to three, and those will carry over into the next season. So just keep that in mind. You know, if you're if you're busy searching for caterpillars in the seasons, you can uh, you can always default to just picking ones up in previous ones. Ones, ones, ones. All right, let's see if there's anything in here in this. I don't think there's really... Yeah, I think it's just this life. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Alright, so now that we're way up top... Go over there. Yeah, okay, so... Seems stupid, but I'm gonna drop down like this. And you'll see why in a little bit. So, we're just gonna go sort of down and then back up here because right now I'm going back the way go back up going back the way I uh, I came here because right about here you can actually just sort of jump over and get this mumbo token really easy and then as soon as you do that you can kind of drop down and get this jiggy as well without having to worry about that bird I always found that, you know, if you try to jump from that leaf platform on the left over here, that bird always knocks me off. Like, oh, literally 100% of the time. Oh, what? It's still morning. I don't care if it's 1240 right now. It's still morning to me. Uh, now... You know, I think there was a... Yeah. See, way over here, there's a fly trap with a... Momo token I, that I missed. <laughs> I had it like in the back of the mind, like, oh, I'm gonna pick that up later. Glad I remembered. Jeez. That was not the best idea to, uh. Oh, wow. Speaking of not the best idea. Um, I think that just about does it for summer, I think. I don't really think we missed. Anything. Well, we'll find out soon enough, won't we? As soon as we leave, and then it says, you know, you're, uh, you're missing two notes. Ha ha ha. Okay. Uh, we opened up fall, so I think that's the next place we should be heading. Uh, just gonna do a quick check on the totals. Thirty-six of one hundred and four out of ten. I. Th that sounds right, you know? Uh, not 100% sure, though. Because I think, yeah, winter 
the winter and fall have more jiggies in total than uh, spring and summer, as I recall. So this flytrap is here again. Alright. And I think there's also a worm here, yes. Caterpillar, rather. Those caterpillars do not look like caterpillars. Those look like worms, alright? Uh, I think right now, hold on, I'm going to take uh, just a brief break because... What time is it? Wow, I've been playing for quite a while. Uh, actually, I'm not going to take a break just yet. I'm going to wait till the end of the episode, and then I'm just going to pause the recording because I need to go drink a soda and wake up a little bit, you know. Slap my, slap my face around a little bit just to get myself awake. Oh! I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. So once I'm at 45 minutes on the recording, I'll just split it up and uh, take a quick break, because this level probably requires a break. Been looking at this game for far too long. Oh, goodness. Not this. Not this. This is just stupid, dude. Of all the fly traps. This one's got to be my least favorite because he's like impossible to get into, and then there's you have to get those notes, man. Whoever thought that was a good idea needs to go bury themselves in a hole. All right, so we're gonna go around this way, just as per the usual. I usually kind of go. uh... Wow, it's kind of odd. You usually go counterclockwise in accordance with the map, map, map. Is there something behind the, uh... No, it doesn't look like there's anything behind the... stump. I think now that the water's back up, I can, in fact, go into... Oh! How did I dodge that? I think we can go into the beaver's cave. So I think I'm probably gonna go in there once I collect all this stuff up top. So I don't have to go back and get it. Oh, this note's a whore. Look at that note. Right in the way. So I'll go get that stuff in the beaver's hut and then probably take a quick break because it's not, it's not happy fun time, y'all. Yeah. You know? You know? This level is not happy fun time. So, alright, so let's go into the beaver's hut in the fall. Let's see what's going on. Because he said come back for a reward during the summer. So here he is. Oh, here you are at last. I've been waiting months to give you this. Yeah, he has been waiting months, but we're time travelers. The time traveling Banjo and Kazooie strike again. Uh. There's a few other things in here. Yep, two notes. Look at that. Be sure not to miss those notes. Okay, so I think right now, I think this is probably... This one episode is probably just going to be a little bit shorter than the rest, maybe. But I'm going to take a quick break and, uh... Hey, look, there's a life behind the fire. Take a quick break, drink a Mountain Dew, get my voice back in action, and uh, meet you right back here. So I will see you guys in a little bit.